I have a question for all the artists out there. Of the work that you do, what is the percentage of fan art versus original concepts? <laughs> Greetings everyone, welcome to the underground layer where we bring our creations to life. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. I'm a professional illustrator, designer, and mad creator. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about fan art and our relationship with fan art and, and why we gravitate to it so much and how it relates to music. If you follow this channel for a while, you know that uh, from time to time I will do fan art and I've, I actually used to have a, a long time viewers will know that I used to have something called Fan Art Friday. And one thing I noticed with that is that it did get people to kind of tune in and everything. And because these are, you know, these are properties and characters and things like that that we all know and love. And it's instant, they're instantly recognizable versus something that, that maybe people aren't so familiar with. So, you know, for a while, you know, I was doing, I was doing some fan art and stuff to call, kind of hopefully build the channel and everything. But what I found that, that, sometimes people and you'll find this if you're an artist and you do a lot of fan art and then maybe at some point you'll want to switch and do some original design and it, it doesn't resonate I guess with the audience with your audience quite as well and because of that I think a lot of people they kind of fall into this this fan art trap was I like to call it where you start to get in your head that you know people just you know they don't like anything that you do that's original or whatever just people don't like like it you know but that's that's really not the case i think really what you need to do is you need to give people more time to get familiar with the stuff that you do because like i said when you see something from a, a beloved entertainment property or something it just it there's synapses in our brain like oh i know what this is i like this and and that's not always the case when we're doing original artwork but unfortunately because of this a lot of people they just move away it's like well people don't have any interest in anything that i do that that isn't fan art so i'm going to focus you know entirely on fan art and 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 i don't get me wrong when i do these type of videos i i, I don't want it to come across like i'm bashing fan art because i love fan art just as much as the next person but i think as an artist we need to contribute more than just take something that already exists and put our our own spin on it um i i think because you know, down the road, what's gonna happen if people aren't introducing new ideas? I mean, it's just gonna be the same stuff recycled over and over again. And and definitely there's room for that. I like, I mean, I've got a Star Wars shirt on right now. I'm a huge fan of Star Wars, and I like to see, you know, I like to see Star Wars artwork and different people's interpretations. It's great, but I, you know, but I also love people who do original artwork and if you are sort of in this fan art trap where you find that that's all you're doing and I see this sort of like as an increase I don't know it seems like a, whether it's a trend or whatever and we're all we're all tied into nostalgia and and we love that kind of stuff and I love nostalgia as well but when you when you when I See, I see a, or I hear an artist or, or, you know, on a podcast or whatever, and they're talking about their work, and I, I go to their website or their Instagram or whatever, and it's just, it's all fan art. There's not a single original concept or original idea. It's just them taking, and a lot of this, don't get me wrong, a lot of this stuff is great, and they, the way they approach it is unique, and they are usually a lot of times kind of adding a, a unique spin on it, but, you know, when I look at that, I, I don't know, for me personally, I kind of feel, I feel let down a little bit. Like, man, I, I would love to see this, this person is obviously very talented. I would like to see what they can come up with, you know, out of their own imagination, you know, because it's just like, you're just kind of retreading a lot of the same stuff that you see, you know, everywhere else with these properties that are, that are so popular. To me, fan art is analogous to music. I, I compare it quite a bit. So when I am looking at, you know, an artist and everything, and it's it's all fan art. Like I said, it's. I mean, I get a I get a charge out of that. I'm like, oh, that's really cool what they did with that. But when I think of it, when I compare it to music, and I'm a big fan of live music. I like to go to sh shows and see see bands live. And you know, I like to I like these shows where there's like 
like an intimate setting, like like a, a bar, or a little hole in the wall place where you go and you can see like a great cover band. And you know, I like cover bands. They're they're fun and because again, these are songs and things we're already familiar with, so we know how to sing along and everything like that. And in some ways it's kind of the same where originally they'll go, well, we're gonna do one of their own tunes, and it's not it doesn't come across quite as well. But for me, I, I kind of like that. I'm interested to hear. Okay, well, we know how these guys cover these 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 songs we all know and love. But but how do they? You know, what does their original stuff sound like? And to me, that's a little more intriguing. Now, I probably am in the minority when it comes to that. But but that's what I like to see. Because although I love a good cover band, I really get into it, and I just it's it's a fun time. You know what I love even more? Singer songwriters. I love artists, musicians who create their own, you know, songs and music that comes from their own experience. It's coming from the heart and the fact that the, you know, that it, it's, just, I don't know, it's just a different experience. And I think to me that relates a lot to artists, uh, visual artists. And again, I don't want to come down on people that, that you know, fan artists, but I, really, I, I think, I think, it would be good to have a mix of the two and maybe maybe you do maybe you do considerably more fan art than original stuff but but if you're just focusing on fan art i don't know i mean i just to me you know and and there, there's a reason why people doing it because like i said i mean if you're if you want to make a living doing this and and i don't want to get into the whole legality of doing fan art and 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 all that i've talked about that before so i'm not really going to dive deep into that but there are you know there's risks and things involved in doing work that you don't have any ownership of and everything um and usually it fl kind of flies under the radar and it, it you know most most of the time it's you know it doesn't seem to be a problem because people are are making quite a good living just just doing fan art but I like you know again how it relates to music I like artists who do a mix of the two and and probably and for me personally leaning more to the the original stuff the singer songwriter stuff uh, one of my favorite bands is social distortion who you know they you know Mike Ness writes a lot of his own music and everything well almost everything they write but every album they'll put out like They'll put out an album, but they'll usually add like one, maybe two cover songs. And like, obviously one of their biggest hits was their cover of Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire. And they did something original. I mean, it's totally different from Johnny Cash's version. And in some ways it's, it's, I don't want to say it's more, it's, it's, it's definitely not more popular, but it's, it's, it, it, it's definitely, you know, it was a big, it's kind of probably their biggest hit, you know, and they're not like a band that puts out hits. I mean, they're, they're more of a sort of come, they come out of punk and then they've kind of gone into, you know, rhythm and blues and, and all that kind of stuff. But, but the, the, you know, the, the probably the biggest charting hit they had was Ring of Fire and they did something different with it and it's still you know it's still I still hear it on the radio and everything today but and and that's really cool but I love I love all their original stuff because if you know anything about about Mike Ness I mean his kind of journey as a person as an artist I mean he's gone through a, a lot of stuff and had a lot of demons and stuff in his past and everything he writes about that and it comes across in in the music and and just the same with with any artist and I think and and there is attachment to fan art I, I I mean you can have that same attachment because it's something that that uh, the reason and it's not I don't want to get get come across as oh people are just doing fan art because it sells and that's it people generally I mean they have an attachment to this stuff and they love it and that's why they do it so I understand that but there's but there's nothing really I don't think it's coming from your experience in the way I mean you could say well I grew up loving Star Wars I grew up loving Harry Potter or or Lord of the Rings or, or whatever so so it's part of me and everything and I'm kind of and and I kind of get that but it's not the same as something that something like something that's really personal something that happened to you that's not related to any other you know property or anything like that 
so going back to the the music thing, I, I do like that. I, I definitely love s uh, groups and bands and, and artists who who write and you know and perform their own music that they that they create. And then every once in a while, it's it's cool to hear them do a cover. And oh, that's that's interesting how 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 they approach that particular song. And you know, and there's certain artists that you know have kind of paid their dues that are now just doing pretty much all covers. And it's it's kind of weird because I think of I think of some of the artists that that uh, I kind of that I grew up around because my parents listened to like like uh, like a, a Barry Manilow or like Rod Stewart or something because because they you know in their heyday they wrote amazing songs and for whatever reason later on in their careers that they, they kind of stopped having hits and that either the music kind of went out of style or or just they did they they just weren't able to continue on writing those those same hits so now they've sort of most of the albums that they put out are, are where they're just covering standards and stuff but I, so yeah i don't know there's that too but but then you look back and and you know they, like i said they kind of paid their dues they they have written a lot of these songs that other people are covering and everything but for me personally when you when you look at somebody like like I don't know, like Frank Sinatra, who really, or or Elvis, who who, you know, huge, huge, you know, <laughs> stars, and but they never really wrote their own material. Um, it's a little different because they, it wasn't all cover work. Like some songs that they would have writers write particularly for them, and maybe they had them in mind, and maybe they work with those writers. Um, so it did come from a, a little bit more of a personal experience. But when I look at you know, and I you know, I love. You know, Frank Sinatra could take any song and kind of make it his own and everything. And you know, it's, it's kind of the and you know, Elvis, he's a huge star. But when you, for me, when you compare, like, if you say, are you a, like a Beatles person or an Elvis person? I'm always going to go with Beatles because they, you know, Lennon and McCartney, the amount of of you know what they did for the music industry and 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 the creation and, and just you know experimenting with different styles and things that's what really fascinates me and and the amount of of music that they wrote and what they and like i said their contribution to music i want to see artists visual artists that are doing that same thing and then and you know again beatles did a lot of covers you know they they would do old you know chuck berry covers and things like that uh, but but you know even like twist and shout and things like that which w was early on one of their big hits they did a lot of that stuff but you can't say that they didn't create their own stuff so if you are a person that that's like 100 percent of your artwork is fan art i you know i would just kind of implore you to to explore doing more original you know because you have a voice as artists we have a voice and i'd like to see that come out more so i would say if you're doing mostly fan art start trying to do some some original stuff and and kind of add that into some of the work that you're doing and and if you only do original stuff maybe you know maybe do you know your take on a fan art you know some kind of a fan art thing uh pick a property that you really like but you know, just in closing, I just want to say that you know, cover bands are great, but they're not. There's not a single cover band out there that's setting the world on fire. You know, so when you you know ask yourself, do you want to be a cover band or do you want to be uh, a singer songwriter, somebody who writes and creates their own original stuff that maybe somewhere down the line other people will start to cover and do their own takes and their own fan art of your stuff and to me that's a little more intriguing but anyway what do you guys think let me know are you are you sort of the cover band or are you a singer songwriter let me know in the comments section and i will see you guys later that is all hey thanks for watching if you like what you saw and you want to see more hit that subscribe button also you can follow me at surfworks on social media and now you can support the work that i do on patreon do you like making comics then go to surfworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.